Hello and greetings to all who are watching this uh, on the internet. Uh, if you haven't uh, heard already, the uh, prohibition uh, about uh, worshiping in church together has been now extended to May 15th. So we will carry on continuing this on a weekly basis, uh, today being Palm Sunday. Uh, next week, Easter Sunday, which we will celebrate here, uh, not with uh, great solemnity, but nonetheless uh, with a sincerity of heart uh, to uh, uh, glorify God through his resurrected son. Uh, again, I continue to remind people, too, to uh, continue to support the life and witness of the church. Uh, and we can do it either by um, uh, Internet, uh, through the e-give uh, option, or uh, through mailing the check in through the postal service. Uh, the office does remain open uh, from time to time uh, during the week. And so in the event you have an emergency or something that uh, requires uh, pastoral attention, uh, please feel free to leave a message or call uh, at any time. Our service of uh, the Palm Sunday begins uh, in the Book of Common Prayer on page 270. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading of the entry into Jerusalem according to the Gospel of St. Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you anything about this, just say to them, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. And now we sing our first hymn, number 155.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the word of the weary. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me, because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. 
Then Pilate asked him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest and the elders had handed Jesus over. When Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream I had about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Everyone shouted, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why, what evil has he done? But the crowd shouted out all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was about to begin, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I'm innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be upon us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it upon his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his clothes upon him. Then they led him out away to be crucified. As he went out, the soldiers came upon a man carrying the cross, made him carry the cross, one Simon of Cyrene. And when the soldiers came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then he sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, mocked Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him, if God wants him to. For this man said, I am God's son. The bandits were crucified with Jesus. They also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Ele, Ele, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders heard it and said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and breathe his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son.
The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples to go and take a, a colt and a donkey, bring it to him so he could ride into the holy city of Jerusalem. Well, what's our attitude when God calls us to do something? Well, now suppose Jesus had said to us, okay, go to the mall, and near the main entrance there, you'll find a brand new Mercedes Benz, dark blue, with the keys in the ignition. Bring it to me, and if the security or the police ask you what you're doing with the car, just say that my Lord needs it. Well, how many of us would feel comfortable with Jesus' instructions? How often do we have our own reservations when God tells us to do something? We ask, oh, is this going to work? Or do I have time? Or how am I going to get this done by myself? Or where am I going to get the money? Well, you know what? In times like these, in recent weeks, and maybe in the next month or so, we may be asking the same questions. We have these questions of faith. We don't always, always know why things happen the way they do. But you know what? If God sends us on a mission or God asks us to be faithful and patient, then he will give us his blessing uh, and the strength to do that very thing. By the way, a donkey uh, symbolized uh, sacredness or holiness, especially if it was uh, used or ridden for the first time. Uh, any animal or things used for the first time in the sanctuary, the holy temple, uh, was considered uh, uh, holy and sacred. Uh, donkeys, of course, were used by uh, those who uh, rode into a city in peace, uh, but if a king or a conqueror rode into the city on a horse, uh, they did not come in peace. Uh, they entered as a conqueror. So the donkey was also an animal of service used to carry the burdens uh, and loads of the people. So basically what happens in this story, Jesus comes into the city not just uh, only as a king of peace, but also one who carries the burdens and the loads of other people. Then, of course, um, there were those who were there but never really actually became part of the parade, maybe just sort of you know, stood off to the sidelines quietly, discreetly. Maybe they waved their palm branches, uh, but didn't really shout much at all. Uh, and then when this parade went by, they went back home to do their own thing. Well, maybe, uh, you know what? Um, sometimes we give God a, a hand clap. Uh, maybe come and worship on a regular basis. Hopefully do what God wants us to do the rest of the days of the week and get involved, not just simply uh, wave uh, our hands uh, or shout uh, a few uh, pious sayings. And as soon as uh, Jesus went by, of course, uh, people went back to their uh, own, uh, in, you know, uh, own business. But you know what? Uh, we are not uh, you know, called by God to remain faithless uh, and to remain uh, seated. We are called uh, to do what God wants us to do. You know what? Yes, Lord, you know our hearts. And you know what God has to say about our hearts because sometimes we run away uh, from you and what you want us to do. But maybe our hearts need a major or, or, you know, overhaul. Maybe we need to change the way we think uh, and live and move and have our being. So today on this uh, Palm Sunday, a parade for our King. Friday, uh, a procession to Calvary and his crucifixion. Well, the people there on the uh, first Palm Sunday who lined those streets, uh, they weren't really interested in a king who would come and uh, make a kingdom in their hearts. Uh, they wanted somebody who would be a prince of war, uh, not a prince of peace, someone who would conquer uh, the Romans and drive them out. But you know what? They didn't want to live under the authority of Rome, and they didn't want to live under the authority of the prince of peace either. Remember as a child, we used to play follow the leader? Yeah, but we want to play hide and seek, don't we, as adults? But the problem is God always comes out and finds us. And the Bible is not uh, all about our search for God, but it's about God's search for us, not just in ancient times, but in the present time as well. We want a Savior who won't ask us of anything. We want uh, a leader, uh, but it won't cost us anything if we follow him by our own admission. We want justice, but what's it going to cost? Yeah, we'll crown Jesus as our Lord and Master, uh, but at the same time, we don't want to submit to his authority. We want a Savior who will, yes, take us to heaven, but are we willing to live for him here on earth? The only palms that really mattered uh, on Good Friday were those palms which took the nails uh, and bled. These days, of course, everyone is very diligent about washing their hands frequently. Do we wash our hands, though, of the misery of sin and injustice 
that which so inflicts our world today? Or do we walk the way of the cross? We don't need to see the proof. We are on the other side of Easter. We know the end of the story. Disciples had to wait two days. You know what? We know the outcome. We know what will happen at the last day. And we mourn, of course, our Lord during this week, but at the same time, like St. John, the Blessed Apostle, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, hopefully we too will be at the cross as well. And as the old hymn tells us and asks us, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? And were you there when he rose up from the dead? And hopefully, prayerfully, at the end of this week, at the end of this season, maybe at the end of this month, we can say, yes, Lord, we were there. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. The prayers of the people are guided by Form 4, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. In our prayers for the church, let us remember Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, and Stephen, our priest. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the work of the church in the Holy Land. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We continue to pray for an end to terrorism and violence for our president, administration, Congress, the leaders of our local governments, the armed forces of our nation, especially those serving overseas, and for Christians persecuted for their faith. Guide the people of this land and of all the nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those celebrating a birthday this week, Walter Zubiak, Mara Walter, Emma Erickson, Martha LeBay, for those celebrating a wedding anniversary, Charles and Margie Sandell, Maria and Matthew Hogan, for the faithful departed, especially George Pinnock Jr., Ronald Campbell, Eglantine Devonish, Rodrigue Pierre Paul, and for our expectant mothers, Danny and Andrea. 
Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us remember the sick, especially those on our prayer lists, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger, for those who are affected by the coronavirus pandemic, for all who have lost their jobs, and for all whose livelihoods are threatened, for all who are infected or in isolation, for all medical prof professionals, first responders, and military personnel who are treating the sick and assisting communities in need, for the family and friends of those who are infected and who watch and wait for all who have died and those who mourn for them, and for all who are working to find effective treatments and a vaccine to end the spread of COVID-19. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, physician of the body and soul, you restored sight to the blind, healed the lame, and cured those with leprosy. Grant we beseech you the necessary knowledge and perseverance to all who are working on a vaccine to spread to it quickly in the spread of COVID-19. Have mercy on those who have died and grant comfort to all who are affected in any way and those who are living in apprehension. Give us the grace each day to trust in you and your loving mercy. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Go forth into the world and glorify the Lord in your life. Thanks be to God.